As tensions over the Israel-Hamas war continue to boil on campuses across the country, Columbia University on Monday moved classes online while dozens of students were arrested in protests at Yale, and school officials closed Harvard Yard to the public. Demonstrations at both Yale and Harvard were planned in part out of solidarity with protesters at Columbia who set up an encampment last week that led to the arrest of more than 100 students. The protests have raised concerns for the safety of Jewish students and fueled a national debate over student demonstrations as campuses grapple with growing unrest over the war in Gaza. Columbia President Minou Shafik said in a statement Monday that while online classes are being held, a working group of deans, university administrators, and faculty members will try to bring this crisis to a resolution by, among other actions, speaking with student protesters. Columbia is the latest U.S. school to be rocked by the Israel-Hamas war, which began with Hamas' brutal border attacks on Israeli communities October 7. Israel's subsequent bombardment of Gaza has led to a dire humanitarian crisis there and fueled protests nationwide demanding a ceasefire. Just after a student walkout noon Monday at Columbia, a group of pro-Palestinian and pro-Israeli protesters remained outside the university gates, banging drums and carrying signs and flags. About a dozen pro-Palestinian protesters shouted, Resistance is justified when people face genocide. Resistance is justified when people are colonized. After a few minutes, officers with the New York Police Department told the group not to bang the drum. The NYPD told USA Today that as of 12.25 p.m., they had no record of arrests or people being taken into custody outside the school. The department said the most recent arrest was Saturday. Shai Davidai, an assistant professor of business at Columbia, spoke out against the school from its front gates after he said he was denied entry onto campus Monday morning. They have deactivated my card, they are not letting me, a Jewish professor at Columbia, they are not letting me on campus he said. Davidi told a crowd gathered outside that he was not given prior notice his entry card would be deactivated, and that later the university told him he would be allowed on the business campus to teach Tuesday. On the social media platform X, formerly Twitter, Davidi wrote, Earlier today, at Columbia University refused to let me onto campus. Why? Because they cannot protect my safety as a Jewish professor. This is 1938. At a news conference, Michael Gerber, Deputy Commissioner of Legal Matters for the NYPD, said the city had nothing to do with the decision to deny Davidi entry onto campus. They're doing their own analysis, making their own decisions, making their own safety determinations, he said. That's not us. The university did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Outside of Columbia's gates near 115th Street in New York, pro-Palestinian protesters gathered on one side chanting with students inside the campus. Pro-Israeli protesters grouped up on the other. Tahia Islam, an organizer with Shut It Down for Palestine, said the coalition has been working and communicating with students in the encampment, where she said they have created a community of safety and care. They are putting so much of their lives, their careers at risk because they know that the real struggle and the real school is in this moment, right now. It's not in what's getting taught, in these ivory towers, she said. They're part of a historical legacy of student movements. They're absolutely on the right side of history and will be with them every step of the way. Columbia student Hector Lionel took issue with the university's messaging that the students in the encampment were disrupting his studies. The closed gates with ID checkpoints are a bigger hassle than the tents, he said. It's just gotten too dystopian, Lionel said. Now we need to defend the right to protest. New York Governor Kathy Hochul, a Democrat, met with Shafik on Monday morning to discuss the security situation on the school's Manhattan campus. In a video posted on X, Hochul underscored the need to ensure students and faculty have the right to peacefully protest while also upholding human rights laws. The recent harassment and rhetoric is vile and abhorrent, Hochul wrote in a social media post. Every student deserves to be safe. The meeting came after New York City Mayor Eric Adams, a former police officer, condemned the situation Sunday and promised that any demonstrators around campus found to be in violation of laws would be arrested. We will not be a city of lawlessness, and those professional agitators seeking to seize the ongoing conflict in the Middle East to sow chaos and division will not succeed. He wrote on X, drawing praise from the Israeli consulate in New York. Following days of escalating protests at several major universities across the country, 
President Joe Biden urged Americans to speak out against an alarming surge of anti-Semitism in the U.S. silence is complicity, Biden said in a written statement Sunday night. Even in recent days, we've seen harassment and calls for violence against Jews. This blatant anti-Semitism is reprehensible and dangerous, and it has absolutely no place on college campuses or anywhere in our country. In the Sunday statement, Biden also wished the Jewish community a happy Passover, which begins Monday evening. This year, let us remember the central Passover theme that even in the darkest of times, the promise of God's protection will give us strength to find hope, resilience, and redemption, Biden said. Biden also said his administration will continue work to implement its national strategy to counter anti-Semitism it announced last May. Alumni, faculty and parents gathered outside Columbia University on Monday, some out of concern for what they say is rising anti-Semitism on campus and others in support of the students protesting the war. Amy Wehrman, a professor with Columbia School of Social Work, told USA Today, we are here to show that we have a place on this campus and we belong here and we're not going to be intimidated. Harriet Jackson, who works at the Columbia Teachers College, said she's worried about Jewish students, faculty, and staff feeling protected, adding that she believes in protesting and would describe herself as pro-Palestinian and against any kind of oppression of any people. Among those trying to get inside of Columbia's gates were alumni supporting the student encampment with supplies. Olivia Baker, who graduated last year from Columbia, was trying to deliver food and electrolyte drinks to students. Baker, whose grandfather is a Holocaust survivor, was denied entry to campus despite having an ID. Baker has been in contact with other alums who are supplying food to students as well. It's great to feel connected to this community, Baker said. Maybe not to the school and its policies and leadership, but to the alumni community and the kids who are showing out and changing things. Two conservative New York congresswomen called for Shafik's resignation over the weekend, even as their colleagues in the House, as well as some local Republicans, stopped short of the same demand. Representative Elise Stefanik, whose viral questioning of the pre-sit, 